In this presentation, we're going to be looking at XGen. It's a geometry instancer that allows you to populate the surface of a polygon mesh with an arbitrary number of primitives. XGen enables artists to handle large amounts of instance data that would slow down a system if it was loaded into memory. In this example, we're going to be creating two different styles of hair, one long and one short, both with XGen. So we'll select our scalp and create a new XGen description. When creating the description, we have to choose what type of primitive we want to use. So for this example, we're going to be instancing splines, as well as how those primitives are going to be arranged on the surface and what type of guides we want to use to modify the position of those primitives. So we're going to start off doing groomable splines. They're going to use a brush-based set of grooming tools. So now that our new XGen description has been generated for us, we're displayed with the guides. And the guides ultimately control where the instance geometry goes and the overall shape of that geometry. So let's go ahead and increase the density of those guides so we get a nice visual representation as to what that actual hair is going to look like, as well as just simply increase the size of that. And we can grab some of these brush-based tools and use those to start posing and positioning our hair. So we'll just grab the pose tool and sort of sculpt down here. Maybe give a little bit of swirl there, push the stuff back, maybe pose it back here a little bit, and come to the back. So I'm just kind of messing the hair up a little bit using the simple posing tools. Maybe grab the length tool and kind of punk it up here a little bit in the front. At any given time, we can also obviously go in here and mirror from one side to the other side. So now that we've got our guide set up the way we want for our hair, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the Primitive tab and start instancing some geometry. So one of the things that's really cool about XGen is it has the ability to take what the software renderer would do, the effect of the software renderer, and preview it interactively inside of the Maya viewport. So before we hit this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and increase the number of uh, the density of this. So for each one of those guides, we're going to get a lot of little hairs. I'm going to give it a little bit of taper. And I'm also going to go ahead and set the width of this guy with a slider as opposed to an expression or a map. So we'll just put that to something that's around there. And we'll go ahead and we'll preview this off. So for each one of these guides, we're going to get a bunch of hairs. Now, obviously, we don't need to see those guides anymore. So let's just go ahead and turn that off. And we can actually go in here and turn on the hardware shadows inside of Viewport 2.0. And we get this really good representation of what that hair is actually going to look like, what those instance primitive splines actually look like before we even commit to the software renderer. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do a slightly different version of hair that uses curve-based guides to do longer hair. So I've got some guides already in my scene. Let's go ahead and turn those guys on here. And again, these are curve-based guides, so that means that we can interact with them using kind of basic curve manipulation tools, as well as some custom utilities inside of XGen. So we'll grab some of these curves, we'll create a lattice on those guys and just pull these out. At any time, if I need more curves, it's very easy to add those in. We can just use the Add Curves button to do that, or the Add Guide button to do that. So when you add a guide into a description, let's make sure we have the right one selected here, which is Top Spikes. When you add guides into the description, they actually look to their neighboring guides to figure out what shape they should be. So you can see as I drop down a guide here, it's going to look to, to those neighboring guides, again, to add in and get kind of clumped into the right overall position of what the neighboring guides were doing. So with that done, obviously we can go back to our generator and generate a preview of this. So let's go ahead and just do that. So now we've got our preview generated. Let's go ahead and hide the display of those curves. And right now this hair is all very random or very very even. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the modifiers and I've got a few of these set up. So the first modifier is a cut modifier that's going to randomize the length and then we've got a couple, a couple clumping modifiers. So we're actually going to clump a large large clumps and then we're going to have sub clumps on top of those. So we're layering together a couple of modifiers and we have a, a pretty substantial list of modifiers that we can choose from and again these all have a lot of attributes and they can be kind of layered on top of each other to get to the overall look and feel that you need to make your hair exactly the way you want. So we'll preview this one more time. And again, this preview is doing basically what the software would do, except giving us the ability to view it in our interactive application. So obviously, if we kind of start to spin around our head here, we get a really good sense of what's going on with our hair before we commit to that final render. In this next example, we're going to be using XGen to instance some geometry across the ground plane to lay out a forest. The first step in doing this is teaching XGen about the archives that we want to use and creating custom archives. So we'll jump into another cut of Maya to go ahead and do that. So what we have to do is pick the piece of geometry that we want to turn into an archive and just go to the XGen menu and tell it that we want to export that as an archive. 
So we have a few options. We can uh, have it automatically add levels of detail for us as well as include animation. It's a pretty simple example, so we're going to leave both of those off. And we'll just export this out. So what we're saving out is a description file that points to an Alembic file that XGen uses in the interactive version of Maya. So basically what we see in Viewport 2.0. It's saving out a mental images.mi archive file that the renderer will use to reference in the instance geometry on demand at render time. And we're saving out a Maya ASCII file that includes all the shader information that we have the option to import in when we paint down instances using XGen. So let's go ahead and jump back to the other cut of Maya. We'll grab that ground plane and we'll create a new XGen description on it to begin populating the scene with those new trees. So just like we were doing with the hair, we have the option to adjust what type of primitives we want to instance on this piece of geometry. In this example, it's going to be a custom piece of geometry, an archive. We'll call it tree for the description. We're going to have it randomly place out on the piece of geometry. And we're going to be using um, guides to assist us in the overall position and orientation of the trees as they're instanced onto that piece of geometry. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and jump over to our primitives tab here. The first thing that we're going to do is grab our guides tool and start laying down a couple of guides. Notice that the guides tool kind of follows the overall contour and finds the normal of the piece of geometry that you're drawing it onto. We'll drop down the intensity the density of these guys down to something like 0.15. We'll come down to the bottom of this and we'll import in a couple of trees to use. So we're going to get two trees, a fir and a hemlock, and we'll just load those guys in. Now we have the ability to tell it whether or not we want to bring in the Maya ASCII file, which in this example we'll do so that we have different shaders on the snow as well as the, the bark. So with that done, what we can do is kind of spin around here, and you'll notice that these trees are using those guides to basically get the overall position and orientation of themselves in the scene. So if I take one of these guides and change its angle, so that it's pointing upwards, the trees are now going to grow properly. And there's also, if I was to do something like maybe scale this down, it's going to interpolate the instance of these trees between these different guides. So they're going to transition now from being a little bit smaller to a little bit bigger. And we'll over exaggerate that a little bit by making that guy a little bigger and also making that guide sort of pointing up here. So we have this kind of nice transition between small trees to big trees but they're still very uniform. So what we want to do is we want to use some expressions to help add some randomness to this. And this is really simple to do inside of XGen. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a random expression to the twist value. So what twist does, let's just preview this one more time, it lets you spin those trees around. Now by using the slider, they're all getting the same attribute set to their twist value. So what we're going to do is just make a quick expression. So as I start to type this out, you can see that it gives me the ability to get um, the auto complete as well as gives me tool tips. So we'll go 0 to 360. We'll accept that out. So now each tree has its own unique value set for the twist. So the next thing that we want to do is use the length, the width, and the depth to adjust the overall size of these trees. And I want to have a random number driving those, but I want to have the same random attribute tied into each one of these guys, length, width, and depth. So to, to help us do that, we're going to create a new custom attribute and put the random number into the custom attribute and reference that into length, width, and depth. So this is really simple to do. We'll just call it this custom attribute TS. It's, it'll be a float number. We'll go and we'll create that. And right now it's basically equal to zero, which isn't going to do anything very useful for me. So we're going to create another expression. This time we're going to create an expression that has a slider that's then multiplied times the random number generator. So we'll bring up the expression editor. So to create sliders and uh, expressions inside of XGen is really simple. All you have to do is just do dollar sign A and then make it equal to that. So as soon as we do that, you can see we now have a slider. And if I start to move that slider, that number now gets piped into dollar sign A. So in our second line of our expression, we're just going to say dollar sign A times a random number generator. So we'll just type rand, use the autocomplete. We'll do something like 0.6 to 1.2. And we'll go ahead and we'll accept that. So once we accept this, we now have a slider in here. The slider's number is then multiplied times that random number. So all we have to do now is go back to our primitives tab and make length, width, and depth equal to that new attribute that we just had. So we'll use the expression editor again to do that. So we'll just say it's equal to TS's. Oops, let's hold down that shift key on that guy. So we've got TS's value in there. I'll just copy that so it makes it a little bit faster for me to paste it in here. So those guys are now random in height, but still have the same width and depth. So we'll just paste. 
skinny in some spots now, and then we'll paste this one. Cool. So now we've got random trees. They're kind of random in size, they're random in rotation, and they're sort of filling in my land here. So let's go ahead and increase the density, get a really nice dense forest going. We'll put this up to something like 0.6. The problem is a lot of these trees are kind of coming into my city here, which isn't really what I want to have happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to further assist our, our kind of further modify the way this geometry is being instanced onto the ground plane with the use of a map. We're going to use a mask to kind of block out where we don't want the trees to exist. So we're going to create a white background starting color. So it's going to basically fill and not make a change. So now that that's done, all we have to do is grab our paintbrush tool and just start painting it black values where we don't want trees to grow, which is kind of all around here where these buildings are. I'll leave a few trees in the middle there. I'm okay with that. All right, let's go ahead and we'll paint back here too. It looks like this building's getting some trees growing into it. So we'll sort of delete those guys off. So all we have to do now is save this map out. And as soon as we do that, you can see that those trees disappear. I'm going to paint a few more out of this area right here. I don't really want those in this courtyard either. So it looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and jump back into our hardware lighted mode. Get rid of that brush tool. So in just a matter of a few minutes, we were able to take our scene, populate it with a variety of different trees, randomize them using expressions, and also modify where they exist with the use of a map. And we end up with a result that looks pretty amazing. So that's just a couple of examples of the types of things that you can do with XGen. It's an extremely powerful and flexible tool that has the ability to instance any type of geometry arbitrarily and generate massive, massive scenes.